This is the story of some American classic cars that are now more expensive than your modern high-performance cars. Living the dream doesn't get any better than a Porsche 911 Turbo. Near 200 miles per hour performance in what is generally accepted as the most user-friendly sports car money can buy for the relatively wallet-friendly price of $175,000. If the Porsche is a little too common, how about a classic American car instead? However, before reaching for the latest edition of Auto Trader, you might need to take a few deep breaths. Prices in recent years are on a steep upwards climb that makes the Porsche decidedly cheap. First on the list is a 1967 Ford Mustang Shelby GT500. My name's Carol Shelby and performance is my business. Nothing shouts American classic more than a Mustang. This 1967 Fastback GT500, after recently undergoing a ground-up restoration back to factory specifications, rolled across the block at Mecham Auctions with a starting price of $295,000. By now, every gearhead into American classics knows the GT500's backstory. The Ford 390 cubic inch motors were replaced by Shelby American with a more muscular 428 police interceptor. Dishing up 355 horsepower, it might lack the finesse of a modern supercar, but when it looks and sounds this good, who cares? Next on the list is the 1971 Dodge Charger RT. The all new Dodge Charger sets the style for 71. Choose your power from the economical Slant 6 to the Magnum V8s. Charger is sporty in every way. Now, get all the excitement of 71 Dodge Charger. The 1971 Dodge Charger RT has one of the widest ranging market prices of all the classic American muscle cars, the latter climbing well into the $250,000 range for matching numbers fully restored examples. History, condition, and more important, year of manufacture play a big part in values. In 1971, Dodge merged the Charger and Coronet Super B product lines for a single year. The base engine was a mighty 440 cubic inch V8, sporting a single four-barrel carb, delivering 375 horsepower. Emissions regulations forced its retirement the following year. The 1953 Chevrolet Corvette C1 is next on our list. It's a well-known fact that the first batch of Corvettes weren't quite production ready, rolling off the assembly line in late 1953 with a few quality issues left to iron out, added to which cockpit ergonomics made for an uncomfortable driving experience, with the steering wheel sitting disturbingly close to the driver's chest none of which made the slightest difference, production reaching 300 in 1953, the following year 3,640, and 700 cars in 1955. Hardly big numbers, but the Corvette has become an icon among collectors, with little to differentiate model years when it comes to values. 1953, 54 examples, easily reaching $250,000 and higher in the right conditions. Next up is the Plymouth Superbird, road car base racer turned road legal muscle car. The Plymouth Superbird isn't for the faint-hearted or gearheads hoping to keep a low profile thanks to a rear wing that wouldn't look out of place on a top fuel dragster. Breaking cover in 1970, closely based on modified Roadrunner drivetrains, production numbers are sketchy at best somewhere between 1,920 to 2,783 Superbirds making it to the dealer's showrooms. More reliable sources pegging the true number at 1,935. The Superbirds had three engine options, the 426 Hemi, the 440 Super Commando 6 barrel, and the 440 Super Commando. Only 135 models were fitted with the 426 Hemi. Auction prices are in the region of $265,000. Next on the list is the 1960 Cadillac Eldorado Bia Ritz Convertible. Bigger has always been a complex measure of success. In this regard, every high-rolling executive or film star needs one of these monsters. Measuring a colossal 225 inches nose to tail, 
Standard production cars rarely get any larger. The same can be said of collector's prices. Auction vehicles of lesser quality regularly reach $200,000, with fully restored or mint examples going for almost double. Size isn't the only supersized element of the Eldorado's design, tipping the scales at 5,100 pounds thanks to a standard equipment list that would put most limos to shame. Power seats, air suspension, electric locking doors, and trunk all adding weight. Tasked with moving this gigantic car, Eldorado spec'd a 390 cubic inch V8 with 345 horsepower and not a bad 0 to 60 time of 10.8 seconds for such a big car. Speaking of big cars, be sure to check out our other video, The Biggest American Classic Cars. Now back to the list. Next is the Buick GNX. Turning the muscle car and sports car scene on its head in 1987, Buick's GNX demonstrated the seemingly unconscious benefits of a lick of black paint and a turbocharger. Developed or designed around the outgoing Regal, a car which most gearheads wouldn't look twice at, let alone dream of outdragging supercars. And yet, that's exactly what the GNX did, beating contemporary Ferraris, thanks to a large helping of turbo know-how from McLaren Performance Technologies. Picking up one of these all-black sleepers in 1987 would have set you back $30,000. Today, collectors are willing to pay over $200,000 for original GNXs. So, Hammer time, $200,000 for that 87 Buick GNX. Next on the list is a 1969 Chevrolet Camaro ZL1. Rarity alone makes the 1969 Camaro ZL1 highly collectible. In total, Chevrolet produced just 69 of these rare special edition coupes, reflected in recent auction prices reaching over $1 million. Influenced by NHRA Superstock drag racers, customer dealer option cars resulted from Chevrolet's Copo project. Want to know what a seven-digit payout lands you? On the cosmetic side, not a great deal. Cowl induction hoods are pretty much it. However, raising the hood is where the magic happens. A modified 427 resulted in a claimed 430 horsepower. In reality, 500 horsepower is a much more believable figure. Last on our list is the 1965 Shelby Cobra 289, another one million dollar dream ride. Now million dollars match, a million dollar bid, nine fifty. Now one million, a million dollar bid, a million fifty, million fifty, a million. Carol Shelby's original Cobra 289 is one of the most sought after American classics. The earliest MK1s used 260 Fairlane motors before making the switch for the remaining 51 MK1 Cobras to a 4289. Follow-up models gained more power and bigger engines, but to the serious collector, the Cobra 289 remains the purest driving experience, even if the equipment levels are less generous. Well, there you have it. Some of the American classic cars that are now more expensive than your modern, high-performance cars. Which was your favorite? Leave a comment below. Give us a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit that bell to be notified of future videos. Again, thanks for watching the Boca Brothers Classic Car Reviews.